Today we talk slopes, rates of change, and writing linear equations. Rate of change is just a fancy statement to say it's a ratio to compare how much one quantity changes relative to another. It's also most commonly known as the slope. So when we talk rate of change, we're talking slope. Now, slope can be calculated in a number of different ways. Change in y over the change in x, the rise over the run, which many of us know. Difference of y's over the difference of the x's, or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and the alpha abbreviation for it is m. So when we talk about a line and we want to find the slope from point to point, we take the rise, how much it goes up from one point to the next over the run, how much it goes over from one point to the next. A line moving up as you go from left to right is has a positive slope. A line moving down as you go from left to right is a negative slope. Horizontal lines have zero slopes and vertical lines have no slopes. The way I always remember these things is the word zero. The top of the Z is a horizontal and no slope or undefined slope. The letter N in no is vertical and I associate that with my vertical line. If I wanted to find the slope of a line, I can either use a numerical calculation or just go ahead and count how far I go up and how far I go over. So we know this is a positive slope, first of all, because it rises as I go from left to right. And if I go up one, two, three, four, my rise is equal to four. My run is equal to three. So this has a slope of four thirds. Likewise, this has a negative slope. I go down a total of one, two, three, whoops, one, two, three, four. Again, go down four, but in this case, I'm only going over two. So the slope in this case is a negative four over two, or a negative two. So in this case, they give us some data. It says in 2004, we have this many students applying, and in 2006, we have this many students applying, and we want to find the rate of change in the number of students applying for admission from 2004 to 2006. So we're looking for the change in the students relative to the amount of time. So we take the two differences, or we take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So the second y value would be the second number of students first y value is number of students in 2004 and then we take the difference in our years of 2006 over subtracted by 2004. So the difference in the numerator is going to give us 3,413 over 2. If we wanted to make that a singular number, the rate of change is 1706.5 students per year. Likewise, we can get the same type of information off a graph. We want to find the rates of change for women from 2005 to 2025, and then from 2025 to 2050. So we look for the women, that's the little squares. We see that from 2025 to 2000 is our denominator, so we take that difference. Put that in our denominator. Then we look for the rates of change in women in those two dates. So from 2005, I have 84 and 80. So I get 4 in this case over 25. 
that's my first rate of change. And then once again, I look from 2050 to 2025. It's my denominator. Look at the women in those years, 87 and 84. So that's three over 2000 or over 25. You notice this has a greater slope. Therefore, greater rate of change. Now, if we want to do a more calculation based computation of the slope, they want to know the slope of the line passing through the points. I could simply graph these if I wanted to, you know, 3, 4 somewhere over here, negative 5, 1 somewhere over here, and I could count rise over run, or once again, Take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Second y coordinate is 1. First y coordinate is 4. Second x coordinate, negative 5. First x coordinate, 3. And negative 3 over negative 8, which is a positive 3 eighths. And that's equal to my slope. We can do the same in this case. We take second y coordinate, negative 8, minus 10, x coordinate, 3, minus 3. You'll notice in this case, we get negative 18 over 0. We can't divide by 0, so we say this has no slope. And if you were to graph these, here's 3, 10. 3, negative 8, connect the dots, vertical line. Makes sense. In this next example, we're going to use a slope calculation of the difference of y's over the difference of x's, but we're going to be solving for something different. We're finding the value of w, given that we already have this slope of negative 6 seventeenths, and it passes through a point 5, negative 9, so here's my x and here's my y. And another point of w and 2. Now in this case, you know this is an x and a y. This w also represents an x and the 2 represents a y. Whereas this term, negative 6 seventeenths, is our slope. So let's do a slope calculation. The slope, negative 6 seventeenths, is equal to the second y, which is 2, over the first y, which is negative 9, over the second x, which is w, minus the first x, which is 5. So simplifying just a little bit, I get negative 6 over 17 is equal to 11 over w minus 5. Now you'll notice my unknown is in my denominator. And I have two equal fractions, so let's go back to Algebra 1 a little bit. And when I have two equal fractions, that's a proportion. And we can solve proportions by taking a cross product. So what I have is negative 6 times w minus 5 is equal to 17 times 11. So in this case, 17 times 11 is 187. And I have negative 6w plus 30. I'm going to solve this for w, which means I subtract 30 from both sides. I get 157 is equal to negative 6w. And then if I divide 157 by 6, that's not going to reduce. So I get W is equal to negative 157 over 6. So that's my X coordinate of that point. Linear equations are, again, any equation that can be written in the form Y equals MX plus B, where M is my slope, B is my Y intercept, and X and Y are coordinates of a point. So if I'm asked to write an equation of a line that passes through this point, 
that's an x and a y, and it has this slope, or m. I just start plugging in to y equals mx plus b. I have negative 5 equals negative 8 over 3. My x coordinate is 6. Plus, the only thing I don't have is my y intercept, b. So I have negative 5 equals a 6 and a 3 reduced to a 2. So that's negative 8 times 2 plus b. Negative 16 plus b equals 5. And my b value is 21. So the equation of my line, I leave my variables, y equals, and I substitute my slope, which you already knew is negative 8 thirds. Again, leave your variable x, and now we substitute for b, 21. So once again, when we write an equation in linear form, we need to replace the m with an actual value and the b with an actual value, and we leave our x and y, because those are our variables. Again, let's write the slope-intercept equation on a line passing through the two points. Well, again, we're going to have to find our slope first. So we take our difference of y's. I have 7 is my second y. 5 is my first. Negative 2 is my second x. And 3 as my first x. Excuse me, 2 over negative 5. So I have y equals negative 2 fifths x plus b. I'm going to substitute either of these two x and y coordinates. Doesn't make a difference. I'll choose the first one, so I have 5 equals negative 2 fifths times 3 plus b. And in this case, I have 5 equals negative 6 over 5 plus b. Add 6 fifths to both sides. And b equals 6 and 1 fifth. Or I could say 31 over 5. Doesn't really matter to me. So my final solution here is y equals negative 2 fifths x plus 31 over 5. To write the slope-intercept equation of this line, it's nice because I know that 0, 7 is my y-intercept. So 7, we're going to use for the b-value. Now all I have to do is find the slope. Rise over run. I move down 3. And I move over 4. So if I'm looking for y equals mx plus b, leave my y. We just found our slope was negative 3 fourths x, and we said our y-intercept was 7. And I'm done. So we talk parallel and perpendicular lines. Parallel lines are lines that never intersect, and the thing that's true about them is they're always going to have the same slope. Whereas perpendicular lines, their products are equal to negative 1. In other words, they have opposite reciprocal slopes. So anytime you have opposite reciprocals and multiply them together, you get negative 1 when you multiply. So you'll see here slope 3, other slope negative 1 third, opposite reciprocals. So in this case, if I want to write the slope-intercept equation of a line passing through the point negative 4, 2, and is parallel 
to this line, I'm going to have to write this in y equals mx plus p form so I can identify the slope. In order to do that, I must isolate my y. So I've got 7x plus 2y is equal to 17. Bring my 7x over. That gives me 2y equals negative 7x plus 17. Divide each term by 2. So y equals negative 7 over 2 x plus 17 over 2. Negative 7 over 2 functions as my m since I have parallel lines. My m is exactly the same. So I move over here and now I have y equals negative 7 over 2 x plus b. And I have this xy point of negative 4 and 2. So 2 is my y, negative 7 over 2 times negative 4 for my x plus this unknown b value that I'm going to solve for. So in this case, 2 is equal to a positive 14 plus b, and b will equal negative 12. Thus, the equation of my line is y equals negative 7 over 2x minus 12. One more example, I believe. We're going to write the equation of a line passing through 1, 4 that's perpendicular to the line of y equals 4 ninths x plus 5. This is already in slope-intercept form. So if my slope is 4 ninths in our given line, I need a perpendicular slope. which is the opposite reciprocal of 4 ninths, or negative 9 fourths. So now I have y equals negative 9 fourths x plus b. Therefore, 4 is equal to negative 9 over 4 times 1 plus b, which gives me 4 equals negative 9 fourths plus b. If I add 9 fourths to the other side, that's about 2 and 4. So that's 6 and 1 fourth is equal to b, or I could say that's 25 over 4. Therefore, my final equation is y equals negative 9 fourths x plus 25 over 4. That's all there is for today. Do the assigned problems and fill out your lesson summary, and we'll talk more tomorrow.